you know, try as I might, I could not resist. What is up everyone, Cospunk back again with a another Heroes Clash booster box. This is the second in a row I have opened, a little more beta than bruise from the first. You might be asking me, Cospunk, why are you opening booster boxes of old sets of My Hero Academia? Quite simple, cheap. They're really cheap. Yeah, I found these boxes at about a fifth of the retail price, so I'm not going to say no to an entire box of cards at a fifth of a retail price. This box cost me £18, so I mean, I mean, it doesn't even really matter what we pull at that point, it's just fun. For the price of less than five booster packs, we have got a whole box of said booster packs. So there's 24 in here, plus two quirk packs, and a randomly assorted XR card which is one of the cards from a set. It could be any of the cards from a set in a special foil rarity. XR cards can also be found in the packs themselves, of course, but you do get one as a box topper. We pulled a few different XRs last time. We still not hit an XR character card, so I think that will be our goal for today. So we will see the XR as soon as we open the box. All right, it's going to be another foundation. All worked up. So that's an our guaranteed. That's an XR common. You can get some pretty nutty things in these. You can get ultras, starter exclusives. Not the most exciting, but still a very cool one to have. I'm going to leave these quirk packs till the end as they do contain potentially one of the biggest hits of the box being the Chivalrous Competitor Foundation, which I am in desperate need of more. And you might be asking me, Cospunk, why don't you just buy Chivalrous Competitors? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Anyway, so on to the first pack of the booster box. Again, there are a bunch of rares and ultras from this set I would be very happy to have, but we'll just see what we pull and see if there's anything cool. Starting off with the commons, we're going to go through these pretty quickly, considering we've basically seen the entire set at this point. We've got a confident inventor. Also, always remember to keep your packs when you buy universes or UFS or whatever, old packs, new packs. They are usable for redemption, so every pack you get is worth a point, and you can redeem said packs for promos, which is really cool. So I think the most important things to me would be we've got a command pigeon flock there i'd be after some more copies of talented baker i think i'd like another stun grenade that'd be really nice tetsu tetsu Freshing would be a good ultra to pull there is the i think it's the kendo attack i can't remember what it's called but i'd really like that i think we've got a nomu you are here so that's going to be our first UR of the box. It's a hulking grimace. Not quite the one we are after. The thing is, I would probably not recommend buying booster boxes of this set unless you can find them cheap or any of the older sets in general. There is a rotation in universes now, so older sets are going to go out of use eventually. I think set one will rotate out when the first new set of 2024 comes out. Anyway, so we've got a conflict of ideologies and our first that is an Eraserhead XR, so a Star Trek exclusive one, and it's a dedicated instructor. So the cool thing about the Star Trek exclusive XRs is that Star Trek exclusive cards can normally only be found inside the starter decks. Unless they come in foil in said starter deck, the only way of getting them otherwise is getting them in foil even, sorry, is by pulling them in the set. I think we've got another ultra here. Oh, it's another secret. Wow, okay, so we've got an aggressive clash. So is it one secret per box? Because I was pretty sure that the secret was supposed to only be once every few boxes, but we've pulled one in both of our boxes so far. And if you haven't watched the other box, sorry, spoilers. I wish for more recent secrets were that easy to get duplicates of because I have, well, I suppose I've had pretty good luck actually. I've got a laceration rare. I managed to get a couple of phantom frets out of Undaunted Raid and I've pulled two Falling Skies from Jetburn so far. One of them just being in a random pack as well, which was really, really nice. Can never complain about. Oh, we've got our first ultra that I was actually after. So I do have a Tetsu Tetsu Frashing here. So that's really nice to have. Not the best card in the absolute world, but it does come in clutch in very specific builds so nice to have you really want to run multiples of it though so having one's not a super useful thing maybe we can pull another if we're lucky 
going onwards to a, oh, well, a stun grenade. We are hitting all the URs here and the URs that I said I wanted, so can't really complain about that. If we can get one of the kendo attacks as well, I think this will be a fairly perfect box, especially for the price. Oh, we have got, in fact, not a, a, a kendo attack, but it is a talented baker, which is the foundation that I needed more of, so that's now my second one, I think. See if we can push for a third. I would like to run it as a playset. Currently being used in a lot of Fire Earth and all decks, which are the symbols it's on, but you really want to use it in anything you can because speed pumps are always super, super useful because you can't get attacks for it if they're not fast enough. We've got a one with nature and a quick draw. This is a band card. A quick draw, so that's a snipe attack as our XR uncommon. Another pack here we have got, let's have a look. Doing pretty well so far. We can skip straight to the back. I think that's gonna be an asset, so it's a Deku's Notebook Rare. Last pack of the first half, so this is pack number 12. I think it's been a pretty solid first half, and we're going to finish off with a Hero's Inspiration. So hopefully a strong start for the first, sorry, the second half of the box. It'd be really nice to hit a XRUR at some point, or maybe one of the attacks or something. Let's see what we've got here. I think this is going to be a sticky ball pitch rare. I always take like loads of time to open boost boxes of newer sets because I'm examining all the cards, but I think it's nicer to go a bit quicker on some sometimes. We've got a foundation at the back of here. What's it gonna be? It is a friend of animals. So you could actually get chrome rares in the set. I think that was only in the first edition printing though. As you may know, I do own a couple of chrome rares. So I have been lucky enough, but I don't think you're gonna find Chrome Rares out of these older packs. We've got a freezer burn here. If you can get your hands on some first edition Heroes Clash, there are, I believe, still Chrome Rares to be pulled. There was a hundred of each available and some were being pulled as recently as this month, I think. So we've got at the back here, it's gonna be a Flex or Might UR. Probably not the UR we were really hoping for, but I suppose the good thing is a lot of these cards aren't super duper expensive. So now that I've been for a couple of boxes, anything that I'm missing doubles of, I can just get a hold of pretty easily. We've got a Karate Chop and an XR, Noble Participation. That is a XR Common. So we've had a Starter Exclusive, an Uncommon, a Common. We are probably, do an XR rare, I think you get at least one or higher in a box. At least that has been my experience with opening boxes of this game so far. I don't know if that's just a coincidence. And we've got a cheerleader, really useful card. I talked about it on the video yesterday. I say yesterday, it won't be yesterday for you guys, but the video I filmed yesterday. Just a few packs left now, and we are going in with a, we've got a hardened uppercut rare. Oh, that's also very nice. A carbo loading. That's another XR common. We've been hitting some pretty great XRs recently, actually. So I did get a bench press out of the other box, which is something I run in my new Toga deck, which has been bolstered by the set six structured X. Actually, speaking of, oh, there's another carbo loading. I'd really like another piercing needle. I think how many ultras we've had? Four and a secret. So I think we'll probably do a couple more. So if we can hit a piercing needle, I'd be a very, very happy camper. And it's going to be a recovery time. So hopefully we've got at least one more UR in the back end of this box. There's four packs left and maybe another XR. Sensing something out of this pack maybe. And it's going to be a influencing view for nothing out of this pack actually. Just going to grab these last three packs so we can take a look. So let's see, which one's it gonna be? I think there is an attack at the end of here, so maybe we're gonna get lucky. Let's have a look, and it's going to be a, oh, it's a sludge you are. Not quite what we wanted, but hey-ho. Maybe one more. I think the biggest hit in the box could probably be an XR Prominence Burn, or a, oops, an XR Toga card. I don't mean biggest in terms of financial value or anything, but just something really cool to have. And we've got another UR actually, that's an Invisible Infiltration. So we did actually hit one, two, three, four, five, six URs and then a secret. Hopefully 
if we can get one more XR, but maybe the Star Trek exclusive took its place. I'm not sure. There aren't guaranteed ratios on anything in these boxes. It's just sort of get what you're given, but they do follow a general pattern. Oh, I think I see a asset at the back of here. So not looking super good. And it is a UA high. So finishing off the box pretty weak, but certainly did get some good cards that we wanted. We're not done yet though. So really happy with the stun grenade and the Tetsu Tetsu thrashing. They are definitely what I wanted out of the box and a talented baker. Obviously all the rest are just great trade bait in general. The aggressive clash is nice to have. People still want secrets and as they're not the easiest things to come by in the world, even if they're not the most expensive or anything, they're still absolutely worth having about. Now we got onto the very exciting quirk packs. Chivalrous Competitor is the card we are after. I'd be quite happy still with training weights because they are playable. Not really fussed about the rest of the cards in the pack. Here we can get one or two. I'm gonna open these upside down and not look at them. So our first, could it be a, it's a Death Arms character card. So not a Chivalrous Competitor. So that's three quirk packs open and not a single Shiv. And then our final, let's see what we can get. And keep in mind that even these quirk pack cards are indeed usable for redemption. Surely we can get a Shiv. And it's gonna be a, another training weights. Classic. Oh well, well, that's just how it goes sometimes. So yeah, pretty mid box, but like happy enough with the rares and the ultras. These are gonna get used. I do need more stun grenades. So shame about the quirk pack promos, but nothing I can do about that. They actually stopped doing quirk pack promos as of set five. So all the quirk pack promos are now put in as different ultras in the set, sorry, different secrets is what I meant to say. These will absolutely all go in my trades binder anyway, and I am off down to my local game store at the time of recording in about two hours. Okay, so I better get on with that. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much it from me today. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you watched me enjoying some cardboard at a slightly faster pace. If you're enjoying these, I might consider doing some other speedier box openings, although I think that when I get my next set of boxes after this, I'm going to really, really, really take the piss and take those nice and slowly because I want to really enjoy all the artwork on them. But yeah, do you prefer the slightly faster box openings or do you prefer the slightly slower ones? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. It helps a huge amount. I don't know why I pointed up. I think the subscribe button's like there now, right? And with all that said, all that remains to be said is Thank you so, so much for watching. I have been Cospunk, and remember to love relentlessly and to become the most talented baker you can be. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.